So I'm going to do my best today because I think I got word from God. Amen. And that's what I'm going to preach today. Because I think more than ever, we are in very serious situation worldwide. And not only outside in the world, but I'm talking about inside of the church. Right. There's a mess. And you know, in order to get into heaven, we must be holy. We must be ready. We must Praising God with all our hearts, with all our strength, and with all our soul. And what I'm going to share with you today is some, something very simple. You know I'm already and be better than me. Hallelujah. But in 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 16, there's the text that I'm going to use to bring God's word today. Hallelujah. Because, you know, it's good to come to church. It's good to sing in the church. It's good to clap our hands in the church. But another thing is to be ready for the next step for the church. Hallelujah. Amen. We must be holy. We must be ready in order to have an encounter with Jesus, our Savior. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the Lord. And that verse, they say, in what agreement have the temple of God with the idols? What agreement? The church may be separate. The church may be separate from the things of this world. There's no bots about it. That is, if you want it or not, if you like it or not, we must be ready to encounter God in His presence. Hallelujah. We are people of God, church. We're not people of this world. We are redeemed with the blood of Jesus. We've been separated from the things of the world. And we must be remain in the things of God. Hallelujah. We are redeemed people. That's what First Peter says. We are redeemed people. We're not the same the way we used to be. When we served the devil, we were Glad to do the things for the for the world and to bring flesh to the to the devil. But now that we are children of God, we must hallelujah bring ourselves into the presence completely to God. Hallelujah. We are redeemed people. That didn't cost you or me. Not seeing Brother Joe. We didn't pay anything. We didn't do anything to be saved. Hallelujah. Amen. But Jesus paid everything. Jesus paid the price for you and me. Jesus did it everything in your behalf and my behalf. Jesus did it. And that's why it's very important that you and I... As Stop this morning and say, I must be faithful to whom he saved my soul. Brilliant. Hallelujah. I must be faithful. I don't owe anything to anybody here. I owe everything to Jesus. He's the one. He saved me. And he's the one I'm going to account and given an encounter one day. And I'm going to give account to every single thing of my life. Hallelujah. We serve in the, of God that we didn't see. And we serve him because we believe him. We trust him. 
We haven't seen God. We haven't seen Jesus. We haven't seen the Holy Spirit. But you know what? We are what we are because we believe what he said. Hallelujah. We believe in his grace. We believe in his salvation. We believe in what he came to do for your behalf and my behalf. And that's why we are what we are. Hallelujah. We are redeemed people. We are saved by the grace of God. There's a, a special course in Spanish that says, Aunque no tenga ganas, voy a levantar mis manos y alabar a Dios. Even if I don't have no desire to lift my hand, I'm going to do it anyway because I know my redemption comes from Him. Hallelujah. And sometimes we don't feel like it to do anything. If you say that sometimes you come to church and you don't, you don't have no desire to worship uh, 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 God and worship Jesus, I'm going to tell you you are a liar because we are human. And sometimes we go through those things. We're not a spire man. We're not a superman. We're not anything like that. We are human. As a human, we go through some trials. We go through some hard times in our life. And sometimes we come to church with no desire, with no, uh, no expectation whatsoever. But as soon as you lift your hand, oh, as soon as you start open your mouth and singing, hallelujah, something is coming oh, into your life and my life. Something takes possession in your life and my life. Something is happening in the church. Even that we came without no desire. Something is going on inside. Hallelujah. The, and, and the moment that you never expected, you're going to see the difference in your life. You know why? Because the Holy Spirit is in you. The Holy Spirit is in the church. The Holy Spirit is in the congregation. The Holy Spirit is here with a purpose. And that purpose is to bring the liberation to your life and my life. Right. Hallelujah. We are a chosen people. Hallelujah. Not only redeemed people, but we are chosen people. That's what Peter says. Hallelujah. We are chosen people. You see, when you are chosen for be something or to do something, you're a special brother. We are special people. We're not just any kind of people. We are a chosen people. Hallelujah. And you know why? That's why we are congregate this morning here. Because we being chosen by God. And the purpose that we come to church is to magnify and to lift the name above our name. Jesus Christ. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. We don't come with any other expectation. If you, if you come to church to see if Brother Moreno has the tie different ways or to the other side, I'm going to tell you, you came with the wrong purpose. Hallelujah. But I came to worship. I came to magnify the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We are a chosen people. We are special. Church, we are special. We're not just any kind of people. Those are the kind of people you can find it outside of these four walls. Because they don't have Jesus. But inside of the church, my prayer and my, my desire is to see a different people to bring glory and honor to the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Yes. He brings us from the darkness. To the light. That's why we're not walking blind. 
The spirit is in us. Hallelujah. Jesus bring us from the from the world, from the outside. Hallelujah. And now we are in light. So what relation the church have with the world? None. 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 In order to meet Jesus, we must be ready. We cannot be satisfied the world, but we must be satisfied Jesus who saved us. If we want to be ready. If we want to be ready for that encounter with Jesus Christ. And let me tell you, brothers and sisters, we don't have too much time. The time is running out. Everything that is taking place in this world, everything that is taking place in the United States, hallelujah, they don't look too good. They don't look too good, brothers. Jesus is coming. Jesus is coming. He brought us from the darkness to the light with a purpose. And that is to magnify him. You see, when, when something belongs to you, you don't, don't want to let it go that easy. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise. Can you imagine now that we belong to Jesus? How Jesus feels when we not satisfy him, but we satisfy the world. Right. How do you think he feels? Hallelujah. And the Bible said that Jesus cried for Jerusalem. And Jesus says, how many times I have won to cover you as the chicken. Cover. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. How many times? Can you stop right now and go into your life and see how many times Jesus has given you an opportunity just to bring glory to him? You see, I say a few minutes ago, what, when you have something be that belongs to you, you don't want to let it go. You know? I remember when I was dating, and I'm going to take you a little behind. I know we all are all old now. We, we have run too many miles. Hallelujah. Too many steps in our life. But when we were dating and somebody else looked to your girlfriend, how do you feel? Uh, 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 hey, take it easy, Baba. Uh, uh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. How do you think Jesus feel when we messing around with the world? Huh? Do you think Jesus will cry because what we're doing? Yes, of course. He always have mercy, but he always cry for you and me. How many, how many times God give us an opportunity to come back? That's a matter. Because I'm going to tell you, in the Spanish world, we think that it's a small scenes and big scenes, and you know what, and you know, the Spanish people, you, you white people don't think like that way. But we as Spanish, we, we think that way. We, we measure everything that we do. We measure everything, the size that we do things. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. But I'm going to tell you, in the eyes of God, there's no size. There's no size. Black, my dad always said, son, black is black and white is white, Baba. And I kept that to myself, what my dad always tell me. You do something against God, you're going to be punished. You see, Brother Joe, I grew up in a world that everything was sin. Everything was sin. 
go to the movies it was seen, pass to the front of the uh, place where you don't supposed to pass, it was seen. You had to go around those places, brother. Because my dad always said, you better, I better not see you going through there. Because you got something coming. Yeah. And I remember that. You see, my dad used to cut hair. And they used to have a, a belt, but this why, where they used to go. I don't know if you see those old things. And, and always my dad says, do you see what I got in the wall? Remember, if you do something wrong, it's going to get you. Yeah. Hallelujah. See, right now, brother, it's a different world. We're living in a, in a new generation where they don't care about anything. What they want, everything free. Somebody owe me. Somebody owe me. Somebody owe me. We don't owe you anything, Baba. We don't owe anything to anybody. We must be ready. Right. We must be ready. And that is we must be in sanctification right. with God. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the Lord. We are a peculiar people. Right. You know what that means? A special. Right. A special people. We are special. You see, that's why we're not fighting inside of the church. I hope they don't, they're not taking place there in, in this church. But I saw some churches that inside of the churches, they're always fighting, man. I remember Brother Joe when I was starting my ministry in California. One of the deacons challenged the pastor. And he challenged to go to the cemetery so they can give you a a few runs to the pastor. Those is the situation that we see the world inside of the church. Hallelujah. When, I, when the people challenge the pastor, man, there had to be something wrong, man. There had to be something wrong in the church. The church is not a spiritual. When things like that arise and takes place. Hallelujah. We are a peculiar people. Hallelujah. Amen. Special. We are we not any kind of people. Hallelujah. We are redeemed by the blood of Jesus. Hallelujah. We are separated by the grace of God. Hallelujah. And we are what we are, and we owe everything to Jesus. Yeah. To Jesus. Hallelujah. If you were from the world, the world will love you. But we're not from the world. That's why the world hates us. That's, right. That's why. Sometimes you go to some activities in the school and things like and you can see different faces looking at you because the world don't love you. Because we are people separate from the world. That's why they don't they don't know how to communicate with us. Because they have never been safe. Right. Hallelujah. And we are saved by the blood of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. <laughs> Because we're not from the world. God is expecting us to be separate. God is expecting us to be separate. Separate from sin. Se separate from anything that will uh, do something wrong in your relationship between you and God. Hallelujah. We must be separate. There's an Spanish song that says, Sin santidad, nadie verá al Señor. Without holiness, nobody will see the Lord. Right. Right. Hallelujah. And, and it's true, brother. 
Aleluya. Sin santidad. Santidad quiere decir separación. Holiness means separation. Separation from sin. Separation from the thing that don't bring set affection to the presence of God. We must be separate. How many times God spoke to Israel and they told him right straight because you left me. That's why you suffering the way you doing. That's why I, I allow nations to come against you. Because you have left me. Hallelujah. You see, hermanos, we cannot be with one feet inside of the church and another feet in the world. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord, because something is going to happen. If you do it. If I do it. If Jesus come. We are in very high danger. That we must stay behind. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. That's why the world. They don't want to do anything for with the church. Because there's no relation between each other. Hallelujah. We are separate people. As we are separate, we must bring, hallelujah, worship to the name of Jesus who has saved us. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. We are holy people. Hallelujah. We are holy people separated. Separated. Separate from this world. You see, the church is getting so corrupted right now because we have allowed the things of the world to take place inside of the churches. The other day, brother and sisters, I was looking on Facebook, and it's California, man. The worship people in the church, one of the players have, they didn't have no pants, they have blouse or in, in, in skirt. And it was the, the worship people. Let me, tell, let me tell you, we have allowed the world to come inside of the church. The Bible says we must be separate. We must be different. I don't know how you see the thing, but I'm telling you just plain and simple, the word of God. Hallelujah. We must be separate. We cannot bring the hangovers from the outside to inside. I have a lot of problems with a lot of people. <clears throat> because I don't believe that I had to drink to be happy, brother Joe. Those things is passed away. But they, they always arguing with me and they say, brother, but one drink, they don't gonna mess your, your life with Jesus, your relation. And I'm gonna tell you, he's gonna do it. I'm, go, I'm gonna tell you. And I always tell my grandkids, if you hear the radio and you're hearing something that is not good, pretty soon you're gonna start moving your feet. Yeah. Uh, and you know what is going to take place? Your body. You start with your feet. And then you start with your body. Uh, you see? And then they're going to come to your mind. And the devil is going to say, there's nothing wrong. You can dance a little bit. You need joy. You've been through some hard time in your life. 
you need joy and you start dancing a little bit. And I have some so much uh, problem, brother Joe, with people, they organ some things that they want to justify in the realm of the spiritual world. Hallelujah. But let me tell you, the Bible says very simple here. What an agreement they have. What agreement? You see, how can you two people be walking together if they are not in agreement? Right. How a husband and a wife can be walking together if they are not in agreement? Hallelujah. How the church can be and walking with Jesus Christ if they are not in agreement? We must be in agreement. We must be in agreement. The Bible said, we must be holy. Right. And when the Bible said, we must, there's no buts. They're, they're not saying, if you like it, or if you don't like it. That's not what the Bible says. The Bible said, we must be holy as you who? Your God is holy. Jesus is holy. We must be holy as our Savior. Because without no holiness, no mankind will enter into the kingdom of God. Simple as that, brother. I'm not preaching you something that you haven't heard already. Brother Joe always say it. Every single moment that these doors are open, we must be ready. We must pray for our uh, people. We must uh, pray for our families. We must be praying for those around us. Because sometimes, you know, uh, you can have some problems with your neighbors. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And I'm going to finish with something, brothers and sisters. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. One day, as a dad and a son was driving through the streets, a plane went through heaven. And the father asked the kid, hey, dad, uh, hey son, how big is the plane? He said, Dad, not too, not too big because I don't see it. Hardly I can see it. He said, yeah, okay. You think uh, the plane is not big? Oh, okay. Then the father took him to the airport and showed him a big plane. And it was in the, in the, in the, in the airport. And he told his son, son. How big is the airplane? Oh, Dad, it's huge. It's big. And he say to his son, Son, that's the way God is. When we are close, we can see God bigger than what he are. But when you are way far from God, you hardly can see the presence of God. How far are we all from God? How far? Is the trouble make you be deceived already? Is the situations in your life deceive you already? And you don't have no desire to keep going? What is going on in your life? And in my life. Hallelujah. And I always tell my wife, honey, I love you. And I probably not going to be able to love any other woman like I love you. But I'm going to tell you, I'm not going to give account for you. You're going to give account for yourself. Hallelujah. If you think your husband is going to take care of you, you I got you some good news and wrong news. 
It's not going to happen. Somebody say, when my wife, Jesus come, brother Joe, he said this man, when Jesus come and take the church, I'm going to hang myself from the, my wife, and she's going to take me all the way. And I'm going to tell you, it's not going to happen. It's not going to happen. You're going to do it by yourself. Hallelujah. That doesn't matter how much you love your wife or your husband. Everyone, the time is coming. We're going to give account to God by ourselves. Hallelujah. Nobody else is going to give account for you. You and I, we're going to give it in our own way, in the presence of God. Will you stand up?